going on guys? Yang with Hardy Tech and welcome to Pokemon Soul Silver Butterfree Solo Run. Although right now we have a a Caterpie that's look he looks so happy. Look at him. He's so cute. Ah. But um before you guys start like panicking or anything wondering about where Pokemon Blaze Black the Egg Walk Run is, I decided that um since I'm just being completely destroyed at that, the series is not over. I want to point that out, but I am just going to put it on a little hiatus and we're just going to do something a little different. Not a Nuzlocke, this is just a normal solo run. I've been wanting to do a Butterfree solo run for a long, long time and I thought, this is a good opportunity, you know, take a little break from like all the constant Nuzlocke's and Egglocks, just do something a little more casual, just relax for a while and once this is over we'll return back to Blaze Black, it'll feel a little more fresh and hopefully by then I'll actually figure out more like what exactly I want to do with that series because just a standard Egglock doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> um, so that's what's going to be happening with Blaze Black, and Johto is my favorite region. And um, I thought, well, this is this should be a decent game to um, do a solo run of Butterfree with. Although I'm probably going to have trouble with the first gym. I imagine if I get lucky, I should, I should, it shouldn't be that much trouble. Is what I'm trying to say. I originally considered doing this of like Storm Silver or Sacred Gold because Butterfree gets a buff in that game and has like a wider move pool and everything. But after consideration, I realized that um, that game's a lot harder as well. And this is already going to be hard enough as it is playing through with just a Butterfree. So I came to the conclusion just to do regular Soul Silver, and now I forgot to go back to my mom's. So we gotta we gotta go home, guys. I'm sorry. And well, actually, let's take a look at our Caterpie really quick. So to give myself a little bit of an advantage, I obviously hacked in the Caterpie named Butterball, and um, I put him in a Master Ball because he's just adorable. He has a modest nature, and I actually gave him perfect IVs, so that should benefit me a little. And he does have Bug Bite, which normally he can only learn through tutoring, which um, isn't really going to benefit us as a Butterfree, because Butterfree is a special attacker, but for now, it should be helpful as a Caterpie, especially because I chose my original starter Pokemon was Totodile, so that the rival would have Chikorita, and that would actually give me an advantage, because I, I'm a big cheater. <laughs> and we'll have Bug Bite to take on the Chikorita, which should help. Because otherwise, just like Tackle from a Caterpie, as much as I love the little dude, isn't going to do like a super massive amount of damage. But I'm actually going to be doing something different with this Let's Play. Um, I'm going to be playing it like different than I've ever done a Let's Play before, if I could actually get my words out today. And normally what that is, is I'll just do like a 20 to 30 minutes video where and then I'll just stop and then we just that'll be the video and I decided that in this let's play I want to do something a little more different just to to shake it up a little more and that is I'm gonna do like somewhat long recording sessions like maybe 30 minutes to an hour of just playing but I'm gonna chop it up into like 10 to 15 minute videos but I'll probably be doing two videos a day like one in the morning and then one in the evening or um Probably um, what I'll do is like one at like noon Pacific time and then one at midnight Pacific time. So you'll still be getting pretty much like the same time amount of content. But um, I feel like this will just be a, a kind of nice change. And I probably won't actually like say like this is the end of the video. I'll probably just randomly have it cut and then just that'll be it. So it'll be like little random cliffhangers. Like you don't know when the video is going to end unless you're obviously staring at the timeline which means you you're just like a, a dirty little cheater i mean i won't stop it in like in the middle of a sentence or something because that would be really stupid but um i i'll probably like after some major event or something or like a good cliffhanger i'll just like have the screen fade to black and then in the next video we'll just pick up where it left off so hopefully you guys don't mind this change too much um i don't really know like where the idea for this came from i know Black White Attack, who, for those of you guys who still don't know, is like the inspiration for what made me start doing doing Pokemon videos. He does something similar to that, where he just does like straight up 10 minute videos, but he doesn't, um, he, a lot of times he'll record like all week's videos in one session, but he doesn't like, what, what are the words I'm looking for here? He doesn't do like one giant video, he'll like actually stop in between each recording, but that's not what I'm going to be doing in this session. Well. When a session ends, I'll obviously stop recording. I don't know if I'll say anything yet. I haven't quite figured out like how this is going to work. This is still a work in progress as I'm actually recording this. So this first video probably isn't going to be super duper exciting, especially considering for a Butterfree solo run, I won't have a Butterfree by the time this video ends. But it's, I thought it'd be a nice little introduction to just tell you guys what's going on, tell you what's happening with Blaze Black, even though even after this video people will still probably ask Hardy where's Blaze Black, when's it gonna continue? And um, 
I hope you guys like the fact that I'm doing a solo run. Some people have been requesting that I do things like besides Nuzlocke's, and I was a little wary at first because, like, the last time I did something that wasn't a Nuzlocke um, was Red Rescue Team. And while that was probably, like, one of my favorite series I've done because it was just, it was really casual and laid back, and I had a lot of fun doing Red Rescue Team, um, it wasn't as popular as, like, the actual Nuzlocke's I do because there really wasn't anything to, like, grab your attention and pull yourself in would pull the viewer in, in my opinion, which is why a lot of times I don't watch just normal walkthroughs of Pokemon, because it's like, what's exactly exciting about these? You know, what is, what's challenging or different? You know, what's the hook to make me want to watch? Just normal Let's Plays of Pokemon. You know, it's different with other games a lot of times, but with just normal Pokemon, normal Let's Plays are... I don't know what normal Pokemon is, by the way. Just like Let's Plays, just kind of boring, which is, for the most part, why I didn't really watch any... X and Y Let's Plays. I think I watched one X and Y Nuzlocke, but I don't remember who it was from. And, um, I just, I didn't really watch them because I played through X and Y myself. Why would I want to watch someone else do it? Which is why I like watching challenges. I like watching monotype runs. Those are fun. Um, I don't actually think I've ever watched a solo run before. So, this will be exciting for me because I don't, I don't know. But, one thing um, that's always kind of made me a little weary of doing like non Nuzlocke's as well is because I kind of panic I won't have anything to talk about because a lot of times my Nuzlocke's I'm just talking about like oh god is the Pokemon gonna die or a lot of times like the funniest parts of my videos are like my reactions when, th when things die and when I'm just doing like something like this where things don't die or there isn't like those special Nuzlocke rule sets um, I actually have to rely like on my own sense of humor and my own uh, ability to talk which isn't always the easiest thing in the world to do because sometimes I'm just I'm boring so hopefully I'm not boring you guys too much today and I'm starting to realize this is this is probably gonna be like one of the hardest parts of the game because there's a lot of Pidgeys and luckily they don't have like gust or anything yet but I'm gonna have to be going back to the Pokemon Center a lot and if it becomes too much, I'll probably start cutting out the Pokemon Centers, so um, I'll just like run back off camera, and then next thing I know we'll have like a fully healed Butterf- or Caterpod thing, Caterpod free, which I'm actually going to go do that right now, so we're going to have our first little heal, and instead of just doing it, I'm explaining to you that I'm doing it now, which is kind of defeating the purpose of trying to save time by just, just doing it, so yeah. Okay, so guys, we're all healed up now. It's so exciting. Butterfree's, like, really willing to kick butt and stuff now. So hopefully we can make it up to Professor Pokemon, whatever his house is. I don't even remember. Without having to run back to the Pokemon Center again. And I, I doubt it because as much as I love Caterpie, he's not really the strongest guy. Actually, no, we're going to make it. Awesome. Well, unless we get... If we can't get through this one patch of grass, just, like, Arceus is going to show up and be like, Nope, this ain't happening. And then we're just, we're going to fall into a giant pit with a bunch of, like, Weedles and stuff. And that would be torturous. But, you know what? We're evolving into a Metapod, so maybe we actually might get Butterfree this episode. I don't know, because I feel kind of bad saying, oh, this is Butterfree Soul Run, and then going, like, a whole video with no actual Butterfrees. And is, wait, is Metapod's attack stat worse than Caterpie? Because this seems to be doing less damage now. <laughs> But luckily, I believe he, um, Professor, Mr. Pokemon, I don't know why I keep calling him Professor. I believe Mr. Pokemon actually heals us up, so that'll be nice. Oh, uh -huh, you must be hardy. I was the one who sent an email to Professor up earlier. Wait, dude, where are you going? Hello? Wait, wait, what? This is what I want to Professor Omber and Jevin. How did you just get a mystery egg out of a bookshelf? Okay, whatever. A friend of mine in Ecrotech gave it to me. I bet you can't find this egg anywhere in Johto. I thought Professor Oak might be able to tell us what it is. He's the best when it comes to Pokemon research for evolution. That's quote for the famous Professor Oak. You have returned to Professor Oak. Here, you should have your Pokemon arrest. Ah ha ha! Your Caterpies are full healed now. Yay! I don't. I can't do a Professor Oak voice, and it seems like everybody can do one except for me. So I'm kind of sad. But and with that, I'm Professor Oak, a Pokemon researcher. So you're hardy. I was just visiting my friend Professor Mister. Why do I want to keep saying Professor Pokemon? I just. I don't even know. I heard you were running an errand for Professor Elm, so I waited here. Oh, you have a Metapod. A rare Pokemon. Metapods are rare? Really? I, I 
cool. I see, you must be helping Professor Um research. I think I understand why Professor Um gave you that Pokemon. You treat your Pokemon with love and care, it seems. Ah, oh, you must be, you seem dependable. Would you like to help me out? See, this is the latest version of the Pokedex. It automatically records data on Pokemon you've seen or caught. It's a high-tech encyclopedia. I'd like you to have it. I already received the Pokedex. Yay, so, wait, what is the option missing on the bottom menu now? I mean, there there's supposed to be something else there, right? Or am I just, am I just crazy? I don't, I don't know. Go and meet many kinds of Pokemon and complete the Pokedex. But I've stayed too long. I have to go to Goldenrod for my usual radio show. Hardy, I have a feeling that this is not the last time we'll meet. Let's exchange numbers just for the safe side. Oh god, uh, Professor Oak, no. Uh, why are you giving little kids your phone number? This is weird. And Mr. Pokemon doesn't even say anything to us. He just eavesdrops on our conversation and he just, he just stands there. Because he's just awkward like that. <gasps> oh my god, a couch. Can we, we wait, no. I want to sit on it. I can sit on benches, why can't I sit on the couch? Arf, I didn't want to sit on it anyways, so... Alright, oh crap, now what? Hey, hey, hello, Hardy! It's a disaster! Um, um, it's just terrible! What should I do? I don't know! Please get back here now! Oh god, what did he do now? I don't even want to know. But, let's head back to Professor...